Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alana and in this week's video, we will be reviewing one of my top breeds of the year. Spoiler alert, A Gentleman in Moscow by Immortals in the cont currently contending for one of the top three books that I've read this year. I still have more books to read. Obviously, I'm, this, this video is going to go live either late October or early November. And at that point, you know, War and Peace has yet to happen. So you War and Peace is in the contender for a top read of the year. But A Gentleman in Moscow, like I said, spoiler alert, I adored it. I did. And first of all, this edition is so good. Look at that cover. I did hypothesize that this would be a favorite, a five-star read for me this year, and I was right. Let's get into why. This book is just so good. Let me tell you, let me tell you why. Adversity presents itself in many forms, and that if a man does not master his circumstances, then he is bound to be mastered by them. So in A Gentleman in Moscow, we get our main character, Count Alexander Rostov, who is on house arrest at a very nice hotel, the Hotel Metropole, which is an actual hotel, Metropole, I hope I said that right, after he has been sentenced to an indefinite house arrest by a Bolshevik tribunal. The Count is of the aristocracy, and once we have the Bolsheviks ushered into power, that old way of life, the aristocracy, this hierarchy of the status of the uh, social classes, they're, they're tearing that down because it's, you know, Bolshevism. However, even though the Count under this indefinite house arrest does not leave the confines of the hotel, and as you can imagine, major world events are happening around him. World War II is a big one, um, the Cold War. Um, he learns that to have a truly rich life, it has actually, actually to have a truly rich life, it has very little to do with the physical space that one inhabits. So as you can imagine, with all of these major events and world changes happening around him, not only in his country, but globally, a major theme, and I would say the predominant theme in this book, is the passage of time and how we age. Yes, a bottle of wine was the ultimate distillation of time and place, a poetic expression of individuality itself. Yet here it was, cast back into the sea of animate, that word, animity, <laughs> that realm of averages and unknowns. As we age, we are bound to find comfort from the notion that it takes generations for a way of life to fade. So the Count and his social status and class present a particular space, represent a particular space in time, an old world system that is fading away. And yet there is something to be said here about the importance of retaining some sense of the past. There are times in which preserving the past is very important. It's relics, it's traditions. There, that is important because when you completely erase and erase history, erase the past because it's not palatable or we no longer do X, Y, and Z, it's no longer considered socially acceptable, you're still erasing traditions and things that are important strands within the fabric of society and its identity and its history. That way you can always look back and say, this was a particular space and time, even though we no longer do it, it's still here for us to process and muse over and wonder about. And just because it's the past doesn't mean it's always wrong, right? Um, we, can, no, we don't want to get too revisionist up in here. Okay. Regardless of how the Count's former way of life is diminishing, he still manages to adapt and focus on the elements of life that are truly important. For if a room that exists under the governance, authority, and intent of others seems smaller than it is, then a room that exists in secret can, regardless of its dimensions, seem as vast as one cares to imagine. 
So the hotel is busting with life. We've got people coming and going from all over the world. So many colorful guests stay. And the Count, even though he's confined inside, he gets to interact with all of these fascinating people. He becomes familiar with every nook and cranny of this hotel and he ingratiates himself into its framework. He even makes himself useful to the hotel and becomes a part of how the hotel functions. And because he is bougie, okay, the count is bougie. Don't get me wrong, okay? He bougie. He is an expert on food and wine, okay? He's a count. He's a gentleman. He, okay, he's got taste that I can never afford. <laughs> and, but his knowledge is greatly appreciated and it's used to the benefit of the hotel. Life does not proceed by leaps and bounds and unfolds. At any given moment, it is the manifestation of a thousand transitions. Our faculties wax and wane, our experiences accumulate, and our opinions evolve, if not glacially, then at least gradually, such that the events of an average day are likely to transform who we are as a pick, as a piece of pepper is to perform, is to transform a stew. That's the count. That is the count. He is a piece of pepper at the hotel. I love it. One thing and what I think is really this book's bread and butter are the relationships in the Count's relationships. He has friends who not only bring him news of the outside world, but they just add a level of depth and richness to his life as he's confined to this limiting space. The Count's house arrest um, really, I would argue, results in some of the most, if not the most important relationships in his life, both romantic and familial. And his bromances, my boy Amor Tolls wrote some amazing bromance. Confession, these are my confessions. Do, 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 do. I am a fiend for good bromance. There is just something to be said in the realm of literature and movies and TV shows with really healthy male relationships, you can never get enough of it. What is it about the healthy male relationship that just, it's just good, okay? And it's just, it just, there is something about that dynamic to me, I think that is underappreciated and underdone, but when it is done and when it is done well, good stuff. I mean, magic happens. The bromances in this book, brought a tear to my eye. Let's proceed. I'm going to tell you why. Um, my favorite section in this whole book was when a character I, who shall currently remain na nameless because I don't like to spoil things. I think this is a scene that you do have to kind of experience within this, within when it hits you, it hits you. But I had to pull it out because to me it was my favorite section of the whole book. So there's a character who's sitting down to have dinner with the count and these two characters play games together. And so they play these games where they put out a category and the other person has to give examples of this category. And, and the first person to run out of examples loses. So they came up with this. So this person comes up with a, this character comes out with a category and the category is fa famous threesomes. And this is used as a way to portray just how important and pivotal these relationships are to the count. His friendships are famous threesomes. Thus the candles were consumed by their flames and the bottles of Margot were, was drunk to its lees. References were made to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Three Musketeers. Forks, spoons, and knives, faith, hope, and love, past, present, and future. Andre, Emile, and Alexander. That's my favorite quote of the whole book. It's actually quite a longer section, so I had to condense it quite a bit, but when you read that passage, at least when I read that passage, in the context of where it's placed in the book and what else is happening around it, I had to stop. There's, hold on, I got a, like a piece of fluff. There you go. Something like that. If it's there, it's just going to have to live there. Amor Tolls timed that particular passage perfectly within the book because it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Again, like I said, I'm not in a, I've said this before in previous videos. I am not a very emotional reader, as in I'm not a crier, okay? Um, 
I can't really actually remember the last time I had a good old hearty, you know, robust cry. I can kind of, I can't remember it probably sometime in 2021. (laughs) Um, but when I read that passage again, within the whole context of that chapter and where it is placed within the book, my throat got a little tight. I was like, is somebody near me chopping onions? Like, do I need tissues? I'm, I'm, this feeling is foreign. What is happening? It really touched me. You guys, it did, you know? I sometimes have joke that I have the emotional range of a doorknob, but not with this book. It, it touched me. Got it in my feelings. <laughs> and also speaking of friendships in this book, because the count comes into... He gets to meet so many people from all over the world because this is a really nice hotel. It's, 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 um, and so people come and visit it from all over the world. We do, in a section of this book, especially when you get to the Cold War, Cold War periods, we get this friendship between the Count and this American. And it's also used to bring up this conversation of comparing this while comparing and contrasting the United States and Russia especially at this time, the Count and his American friend reflect on their respective countries, yet they do connect on a deeper level, regardless of the political tensions between their mother countries. Some might wonder that the two men should consider themselves to be old friends, having only known each other for four years, but the tenure of friendships has never been governed by the passage of time. To some degree, This was because they were kindred spirits, finding ample evidence of common ground and cause for laughter in the midst of conversation, but was also almost certainly a matter of upbringing, raised in grand homes in cosmopolitan cities, educated in the liberal arts, graced with idle hours, and exposed to the finest things they had more in common with each other than they had with the majority of their own countrymen. Isn't that beautiful? And that really is relatable to real life. Think about it. What do we really connect? How do we really connect with people? We connect with people based on who they are, not necessarily where they're from. At least I hope so. See what I mean? Like there are people who um, we have, don't we have completely opposite backgrounds, but there is just something there that we connect on a deeper level. It has nothing to do with you're from this country and I'm from this. That's the superficial stuff that relationships are made out of. It's really once you get rid of those very benign, really skin deep things that don't, that are not really important. That's when you get into the true essence of a person. And sometimes if you connect with the person, you just connect with the person. It has nothing to do with those superficial things that sometimes we put too much emphasis on. And that's really the crux of this book. This book is a gentle novel, which is what I was not expecting. I think it was beautifully written. When I first picked up this book or decided to read this book, I was like, okay, we have a guy on house arrest. He's been put on house arrest by the Bolsheviks. This is going to be depressing. It's, it's not. Is everything in this book cheery? No. But there's something about the way that Amor Tolls writes it that it's quite gentle. And it's, it doesn't feel melancholy to me. It's what makes up this book is the count and the bonds that he forms with the other people around him while he's on house arrest. And I actually think I probably had a smile on my face the entire time I was reading. I kid you not. It was just, there was something cathartic about reading this book. It was very relaxing. I actually felt very uplifted and happy. I felt like the Grinch, you know, when his heart grows three times bigger than it was and he comes out a better man. Yeah, that's how this book made me feel. I think I actually hugged this, but I think, I know. I hugged this book when I was done. I was like, why is it over? I need the count in my life. I need all his friendships in my life. Why did it have to end? This makes me happy. This makes you think, oh, the world can actually be a better place. You know, it was one of those books. One word to describe this book is wholesome. It is, it's a wholesome book. It's so good. Anyway, it's Immortals. So his writing is beautiful. It's witty. There are so many times in this book, I actually think I laughed out loud. It is witty. The The count is a card, okay? He is sassy. He's a little spicy. And we all know, like, I, I like a little spice in my characters. He's very funny to me. And it's just, 
one of, like I said, one of my top reads of the year. It's just lovely, you know, feel good, made me feel good. And so therefore, it got a five out of five. Shocking, I know, after I've raved about it. I very much look forward to reading his other novels. I do have Rules of Civility, which is stacked somewhere back there. I hope to get to that one sometime next year. And then after that, I'll be reading Lincoln Highway. But I'm, I knew that I typically do like to read authors books in publication order, but I knew that if I, I had a feeling that I, I would get on with the gentleman in Moscow. And if I got on with that, I was just going to get on with him as an author. And I was right. So have you read this book? What were your impressions of it? Did you expect it to be as feel good as I did going into it? I was just not expecting that. It's, it's, yes, it's a smart mod novel. It's really well done, but it's wholesome. It is such a wholesome book. And I'm a person who likes to read the most, dep I love depressing books. The darker, the more depressing, the better. You know what I mean? Like when people, the characters are taken to like, you know, the darkest of the dark, the lowest of the low, or they're at their wit's end and they've reached rock bottom. Those are my favorite types of books. This is not a book like that at all. Um, not saying that the Count at one point very early in the book doesn't, he he feels constrained. He does, but he quickly, he kind of gets over it. And the last, rest of the book is about these friendships and this, in, in going on with life. And he, and he does it in such, with such a good attitude. It's good fun. Um, I was not expecting it to be so wholesome. That's the only word. This is one of those books that I can recommend to people and feel like I'm not going to offend them. <laughs> I do have some books that I'm more hesitant, maybe, maybe more in my personal life when I know people personally and I'm like, I know what they do or do not like to read. Like Lolita is not a book you're going to recommend to everybody and their mom because not everybody's going to want to read that kind of content. Pe there are people who don't like to read violence. They don't like a whole lot of cursing in their books or really explicit content, which I totally understand. People read for different reasons. But if you're a person who likes to read to be relaxed, you try to stay away from really heavy, dark, gruesome content because that's just not fun for you. The, a Gentleman in Boscow is one of those books that I could recommend. And it's going to be inoffensive to, um, I, to, I think, most people. Even as much as I love Outlander, there are just certain people I would never recommend Outlander to because they don't want to read graphic scenes. Whereas... This is a book that's a, I also think this is a safe blind buy. If you want to, we're hitting into gift giving season. I actually plan to gift this book to a few people this Christmas because it's a safe read and it's a good read. Okay, let's wrap this up. I loved this book. Again, it's in the contender for one of my top three. If it gets, if anything gets bumped out of that top three that I'm, that I'm percolating with, it's going to be War and Peace. My top three are percolating in my head. An account, the count of, um, not the count of Monte Cristo, a gentleman in Moscow is currently somewhere within that top three. You'll have to stick around later when I do my end of the year reading wrap up, which will probably happen in January. Sorry, not sorry. All right, have you read this book? What were your impressions on it? Did you like it? If you've read his other novels, which one is your favorite? Please feel free to leave me a comment and don't forget to like, subscribe. If you want to follow me on the Instawebs, the Instagrams, my link is down below and I will see you in the next one.